Hello. I just came in from uh, clearing the culvert off the beaver's work and uh, getting myself soaked for the maybe seventh or eighth time today. I just came in to sit by the wood stove and get some hot tea in me, uh, get somewhere comfortable. But the cat demanded that he get on my lap or on my back. So I laid down on the living room floor so he could get on my back. And he decided to curl up next to me. That's uh, him right there. And uh, so uh, there's a fireplace behind me, but that's not the one that's lit. So I'm not near the warmth. I'm on the floor, which is now where it's comfortable. Don't have my tea. Uh, but we're doing what the cat wants. <laughs> so, uh, I thought, I guess this is where we're meditating. And, uh, so cats are known for naps, beavers are known for being busy. That struck me as a, or occurred to me as a yin yang kind of a thing. And me, maybe somewhere in the middle, having been quite busy all day, and now not so busy. So what are our thoughts about busy beavers, naps, and cats being in the middle, or whipsawing between the two? We can busy ourselves with being unbusy. We can unbusy our busyness. So I think what I'm going to do is just kind of take some breaths and see if I can notice the difference between those two sort of states. So under sort of the surface, there's a, there's a quiet continuity of the circulations and the breath, the heartbeat, uh, relatively low grade, super consistent, quiet, unnoticed. And then atop them all is uh, the much more busy uh, mentalnesses. So we have the beaver here, and then the rest of the body is the, the cat. Of course, the cat is very aware even when asleep, and the cat is not a rock. You know, the cat is doing something, he's napping, and he's awake, and he's uh, or he's aware, and he's alive. So this isn't like busyness contrasted with nothingness, it's busyness contrasted with still aliveness, still awareness, uh, but quieter, underpinning, less noticed, perhaps more consistent. So I want to see if I can have the beaver mind and the body mind kind of meet one another. just myself going from beavers to cat. Being wet and cold to coming inside and being relatively more comfortable, drier, less wet. Not what I had imagined, mind you. I imagined a cup of tea, a wood stove, and dry clothes, not on the floor, sitting somewhere comfortable. But here we find ourselves. Let me check in on the cat. It's leaning up against my thigh. I'm assuming, I don't know how dark it is, if you're able to see that or not. But there he is. And so, I'm going to do a little meditation.
I just try and let my mind, when it's busy, relatively busy, uh, recognize the other way of being, the cat way that my body is. And because I'm not trying to unbusy myself or set one against the other or prefer one, and be sure that I remind my body of the possibility of busyness. Let my body recognize what my brain is doing, not just my brain recognize what my body is doing. Oh, that's another way to be. Until I find my mind doing this and going here and doing that, I just kind of say, hey, also, the same being is doing this in body. And when I can settle in and recognize my slowed heartbeat or my slow breathing or my consistent and quiet circulations, I can say, oh, also in this very same being upstairs in the beaver area, there's this other way of being. We're both in the same being. Letting, letting the two facets of self recognize, meet each other, perhaps have something like a conversation. It's interesting to bring my trained meditation mind to the fact of my mind's busyness and then not hurry and correct it. You know, like that's what I normally do. Invoke those skills of quieting. This is a little different. Ooh. It's a tiring day. It's only just sunset. It's probably not even 6 p.m. Uh, I'm laying down and boy, it's not comfortable. I'm not dry and warm yet, but the sleep is showing up. How you doing, buddy? You doing okay, too? Yeah, it's good to see you. So, I think that'd be a interesting meditation to play with. So enjoy.